this is why it's important to get a good understanding. I recently did a video over a prophet, prophetess, who is clearly false, but she brought a point that was made that she brought up that other people are maybe being confused by. It gives us an opportunity to kind of shed some light on some things and also make it a teaching opportunity. So we play a little bit of the video and I'll show you what I mean, what, what I'm saying. Uh, she's, a, she's referring to using the Blue Letter Bible, which is a wonderful app that people can use. You don't necessarily have to get some sort of Bible software like I have with Accordance or like I also have with Lagos. You don't necessarily need those. You can use the Blue Letter Bible. The problem is if you're going to use the Blue Letter Bible, it's important to use it properly. Any tool can be a good tool, but even a good tool can be used in an inappropriate fashion uh, or in a way that can cause even more confusion. So she does that. I'm going to show you what I mean in a second, but let's look at the video and you'll see what I'm saying. We know that the word gate, there's about 123 scriptures in the Bible with the word gate in it. Many of them have different definitions. I have three for today. Okay, that's the first problem. You have, you personally, you have three, four today. That's not how we do that. What what she's doing is we're going to see is once you look at a word, there can be different meanings or different definitions. And sometimes we confuse or conflate a definition for how it's used as a figure of speech, which is not really the definition. And so what you don't want to do is you don't want to just go down the list and just pick and choose. Hmm, I like that definition, I like that definition or that particular way it's written will suit my point better. That's not how we do that, because now we're picking and choosing as though this is a buffet. Whichever one suits us is the one we want to do it. No, we want to make sure that we look at something and see how it's being used, because sometimes words can be used kind of out of their natural sense, but used as a figure of speech. And what she doesn't understand is she's borrowing from figures of speech and assuming or using them as the as the definition. But one of them is Sha'ar. And for those of you that don't know, I look up definitions many different ways. I use a app on my iPhone called the Blue Letter Bible app. I heard it. Now, she said you heard she said she used the word Sha'ar. The word Sha'ar means gate. But the problem is what you're going to see in a second is she's not using the word Sha'ar. As a matter of fact, even the word she's using isn't even um, used properly. But she's referencing the Blue Letter Bible, which is a fine app. We're going to look at it in a second. I'm going to also show you how you could also use uh, different uh, or the concordance in it, but also how you can use lexicons as well. It does not translate good in the Android, but I use an app called the Blue Letter Bible app. In that app, it has a, what's called a concordance in it that allows you to look up the Hebrew and Greek definitions of the word. The reason I do that is because a lot of the English words are derivatives from a root word that means something completely different than what you know. So I like to go to the original intent of why God used that word. Now, if you're going to do so, you want to use the intent, not of the word. If you're going to do that, you want to look at how the word is used in that context because just like english words we know what a particular word can mean and we also know how we can use how we can add different nuances for example the word cool we know what the word means nowadays especially depending on your age the word cool has two different meanings it can mean temperature or something that's nice and so don't think that english is the only language that does that hebrew does that Greek does that. Every other language on the planet does that. He said, I'm going to go before you and I'm going to make the crooked places straight. I now, where she's at is she's in Isaiah 45. So let's go to Isaiah 45. And matter of fact, let's put it on the screen. Isaiah 45. I don't have it on here. So Isaiah 45. And let's put it on the screen for you guys. Isaiah 45. So there it is. Isaiah 45 says, uh, and this is verse two. I will go before you and make the rough place or the crooked place straight and I will shatter the doors. Now, this word that's used right here for doors, is the word gates. And so this is what she's speaking of in case you're trying to follow along. I will break the pieces of the gates of brass. I thought the word gate here was powerful. It means crocodile jaws. It means an easily accessible woman. Now, she brings up two definitions, and neither of those are actually definitions. There are those that, well, wait a minute, Corey. I went to the Blue Letter Bible, and I saw it, and it did say, as you go to the concordance, it does say crocodile jaws, and it does say an accessible woman. And then it also even references 
the BDB Brown Brown Drig Brown Drivers Briggs, and so what I want to do is I want to go to the Blue Letter Bible, and I want to show you guys so that you all can see also on your own how this works out. Uh, let's see, do I have it on the screen? There it is. And so let's go there, and here we are in Isaiah 45. Let's go to verse two, and I will go before you. Let's see if you all can see. Let's let me make that just a little bit bigger. That way you guys can see. Okay, so I will go before thee and make the crooked places. Um, uh, I'm sorry, break the place, place straight. I will break the pieces of the gates. So what we want to do is let's slide this over a little bit and let's just click on tools. So we click on tools here. Let's slide this back over this way and we go to the words. These are the words that you see to the right. These are the Hebrew words and the word that she's looking for for the word uh, gates. It's the word deleth or if it's the plural, it's deltoth. So this particular word is the word she's looking at. Remember, she said earlier she was looking at the word sha'ar. Well, we're not looking at the word sha'ar, even though the word sha'ar is also a word used for gates. So, too, is this word deleth, because they both just simply mean an opening. And they can be used kind of figuratively um, in different ways, and we're going to see that. But this word here is not the word that she brought up sha'ar. So there's the problem. That's one of the problems. So she's confusing different words. Now... Uh, when we go to this particular word, here is the Strong's number. So we go to the concordance, click on this word, and then if we look and see here, let's make this a little bit bigger for you guys. And so if you look at this, well, door, uh, a door, a gate, and then look what it says. Figure, or figure, figure of speech, chest, crocodile jaws, uh, doors of heaven, an easily accessible woman. Now, I've said that's not what it means. Someone said, well, wait a second, that's, that's what it says here. Yeah, I noticed that's what it says here. Well, Corey, is the, is the Blue Letter Bible wrong? Is the concordance wrong? No, it's not. You need to understand what it's saying. It's not saying these are definitions. It's saying these are figures of speech. So what we can do also with this with this uh, concordance, I'm sorry, with the Blue Letter Bible, we can drop down and we can look at uh, the Brown Drivers, uh, Brown Driver Briggs lexicon. And what we want to do is click on where it says show all. So let's click on that and let's stroll down. Now, this word, here it is, the word that left, here it is, door. Uh, but I want to drop down to where it says crocodile jaws as well as accessible woman. So let's keep going down further and further and further. By the way, if you're going to do this, you can't just, what she's done is just find words and says, you know what, I like the way that sounds. I could use that in my message. I want to take this and make it fit into my message. That's not how this works. And if we look at this, we're going to find down here where we see crocodile jaws as well as as well or jaws of, jaws of a crocodile as well as an accessible woman so here we see jaws of a crocodile and by this way the word is del so it's kind of a uh, a shortened version of the left and panin which means mouth or opening okay so you can kind of see we're putting two words together in the hebrew where we get this jaws of crocodile they both mean opening so the door opening and so you you could use this in referencing to a animal like that like a crocodile now we'll we'll deal with this job 41 in just a second but i want to go to the, also this where it says this accessible woman now that's it doesn't mean an accessible woman it doesn't mean anything about accessible it doesn't mean anything about a woman but it's how the word is used so let's go back to accordance and i want to pull this back up let's go to song of songs or song of solomon and let's go to it let's put it on the screen here it has matter of fact let's make this a little bit bigger um, we have a little sister, verse eight, and she has no breasts. What shall we do for our sister on the day when she is spoken for? If she is a wall, now he's this is being used as a figure of speech. So in 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 different languages, you'll have figures of speech, it's idioms, metaphors, similes, hyperbole, things like that. And so you've got to be got to be mindful of those things when you're looking at it, whether it's a, uh, a lexicon, whether it's a concordance, or what have you. If she is a wall, meaning that she is kind of chased to herself, she's not out there about in the street, so to speak, then we will build her battlements of silver. But if she is a door, so now this is euphemistically used as a, as a, a loose woman. So the definition that's used here, the word door is dalet. Now, does that mean the word dalet means accessible woman? No, but it's describing her as an open door. Are you all following? It? So it's not the word doesn't mean an accessible woman, but an accessible woman. And let's say how she uses her body is like an open door. So the word does not mean at all 
an accessible woman, but you can describe someone. For example, even if I just use the word loose, we know what the word loose means. But if I say this woman is loose, well, the word loose doesn't refer to a woman, but the woman can be referred to as like someone who is loose. Are you following me? I want to go also over to Job 41, and I want you to look at this part, this, this verse. Speaking of this Leviathan, this large sea creature, not totally sure what it is. This is where the, the jaws of a crocodile comes in because some people interpretively have said that maybe that this creature that he's speaking of is a crocodile or a large sort of prehistoric dinosaur type crocodile. We don't know. And so when you say a crocodile jaws, the scriptures don't say that. It's just someone giving some sort of interpretation to it. And so in Job 41, let's say verse 13 says, and who can open the doors of his faith? Well, what's the word that's used there? The word that's used there is the word that left, meaning who can, who can open the doors of his faith, meaning his mouth or his opening. So when we say the doors of his faith, well, we obviously know the animals don't have doors on their face. But so what would you equivalent, what would you make equivalent the doors of, of the animal's face? Well, his mouth. And so that's the point there. So it's used figuratively uh, and it's not used as an actual crocodile jaws. And so here we see crocodile jaws or an accessible woman is not really the case that's being used here. That's important. As a matter of fact, let's also look at something else that's also brought up sometime. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis 1. And here's a word that gets that gets... It just gets misconstrued a lot. Uh, it gets used in, in, a, in the wrong headed fashion. For example, this word here for darkness. The Bible says in Genesis uh, 1, it says that the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And so some are going to say, well, it means ignorant. It doesn't mean um, uh, always darkness. Well, no, when you use it in a sense that the person is dark, their mind is dark. That's just something that they just don't understand. They don't get it. It doesn't mean that it means ignorant. It's just how it's used to refer to someone who is ignorant. I also want to use an example in the in the New Testament, in the Greek New Testament. And let's go to this word here uh, in, in Ephesians 4.27. And do not give the devil an opportunity. Some verses might say and give no place to the devil. So what I want to do is let's go over to, to Logos. And I want to look at this the same passage, passage over here in Logos. It says, and give... Uh, not the devil opportunity. Well, the re the word where some verses might say place, because that's a literal translation of the word, the word place, uh, tapas, means, or in this case, tapan, means an opportunity or an occasion or place. It means an opportunity or place because, or opportunity or occasion because of how it's used. And so if we look over to, to the bottom left, you see the word place. Um, and in this case, it's did an eye tapan or to make room for. And so when you say to make room for, oh, OK, I get it. Make a place for that's given a person an opportunity. And so we see this word used to mean an actual geological geographical location or can also mean for an opportunity, the opportunity to do something. And so it's just helpful, even as we look through the lexicon. It's helpful to see the different ways that it's used, how it's used for an opportunity in Acts 25, 16, Romans 15, 23, obviously Ephesians 4, 27, Hebrews 12, 17. You can go look those up on your own and you'll see that these words are used uh, differently depending on context. And you can use words as in a figure of speech, as a metaphor, as an idiom, things like that. We see that all throughout the Bible. And so it's important to understand those. Now, before we go, I want to give you a couple of tips whenever you're looking at a concordance or whenever you're looking at a lexicon, uh, be it a Hebrew lexicon or a Greek le lexicon, a word dictionary. By the way, be careful about using English definitions to give you the Greek definition or the Hebrew definition. Now, there are certain things that we remember in school when we're going through English and some things are going to be applicable when you're looking up these words, when you look at these tools. For example, uh, Hebrew doesn't have noun cases. There's different ways to show if something is the subject and things like that or whatever. Uh, and so I won't get into it at this, at this point in time because I don't want to confuse you. But in Greek, especially, you have what's called noun cases. And the noun case is just a grammatical function. It identifies and indicates the meaning of a noun in relation to the other words used in a sentence, for example. And these are just rough definitions. They're not exhaustive, but the nominative, that's just basically referring to the subject. Now, there are different words that can be used as in the nominative case and not be the subject. I don't want to get into that just yet, but there's different words. So you can have 
two words, two nouns that are in the nominative case. One of them is going to be the subject. One of them might be just a predicate nominative. I won't cover that just yet, but those are things you have to be mindful of. And so you have to be mindful of the not, you have to be mindful of the different cases of a noun, a genitive, which refers to possessions. For example, John has a dog. Well, dog is in the possessive. Accuse it refers to a direct object. John threw the ball to him. Well, the ball is a direct object. Dative generally refers to an indirect object. John threw the ball to him. Well, him is the indirect object. And then you have what's called the vocative, which kind of refers to how you address when, oh Lord, oh God, my Lord, my God, that's in the vocative. And so there's a couple things you need to remember. You need to remember uh, not just for the nouns, the cases, but you also have to remember the verbs. There are moods, there are voices, there are tenses. And I'll put that on the screen really briefly. Uh, in the verb, you have uh, the tense that shows when an action took place, past, present, future. Those are things that you all can we remember. Those, those are pretty easy, right? Then you have what's called the mood refers to how the speaker views an action or how it is carried out. You have what's called the indicative, speaking right now what we know is a fact. Uh, you also have what's called the subjunctive, which is possibility, potentiality. Uh, and so that, those are two examples of moods. Then you have what's called the voice. This refers to relation or performance of the verb. For example, active, middle, passive. Now, Again, this is not exhaustive, but just some examples. And so these are things that you have to remember. You have to remember gender. You have to remember number. Is this plural? Is this is this singular? Uh, what person? Is this third person singular? Second person plural? Those things um, are important, whether it's the Hebrew or the Greek. And so when you just go look at these tools, just seeing the definition of the word doesn't do any good if we don't know how the word is being used. In the example that was used in the video clip, she's she's conflating things. She's looking for definitions that will fit her. And even in that, she is misusing those to make a point that the Bible doesn't make. So remember that when you look at some of these people, when they say these things and they go to the concordance. Uh, as you learn languages, rarely would you ever even go to the concordance. Now, you, you'll, you will consult a lexicon. And even then, you want to look at the lexicons because sometimes you'll find that some of the lexicons don't all agree on the same things. And so uh, you also want to do your due diligence and see why the lexicon is referring to this or referring to that in that fashion. There is no perfect lexicon out there, no per perfect grammar. And so be mindful of that. But if you can get an idea of what's being stated, how it's being stated, the context, and then you read from the context and determine, get your conclusion from the context rather than the other way around, rather than uh, making the context be what you think the conclusion ought to be. We saw that, but hopefully, hopefully this has been helpful to see how you use these tools, be it Lagos, be it uh, Accordance, which both of these I use, or be it Blue Letter Bible. And so both, all of these can be helpful tools if you use them properly. Amen.